Mark D'Antonio Show, your in-depth look at Bearcat football, is brought to you by Beachmont Ford, Pepsi, and ISB Sports. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dan Horde. Welcome to the Mark D'Antonio Show. Coming up, we'll look back at yesterday's stunningly lopsided win at Southern Miss. We'll have all the highlights, plus post-game reaction from several players. And in our player profile this week, we'll shine the spotlight on three true freshmen already playing big roles on this year's team. Coach, congratulations on a remarkable win, 28 points at Southern Miss. This is a team that had only lost 11 home games in the last 13 and a half years. This equals their most lopsided loss ever under head coach Jeff Fowler. You know, we went into the game saying we needed to do certain things, as always. Uh, and special teams played a big part in this. And turnovers, we needed to be plus two. And, and again, be multi-dimensional on offense. And then also uh, stop them from running the football. And we were able to do those things. And, you know, it just... Uh, it's amazing when uh, when people just try and put forth their best effort and the attitude is right with what people can accomplish together. You've gone from two and four now to five and four. If you can win one of your last two games, you'll be bowl eligible. And the way this team is playing right now, winning both of those last two games is very possible. Yeah, our confidence is at a very, very respectful high right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we expect to try and continue to take it one game at a time and one play and, and not get ahead of ourselves. It's great that we got a uh, off week this week. We can just sort of sit back and relax and see what happens. The game was not on live TV. We know you want to get to the highlights, so let's go. Coach, you made a change in the starting lineup. Jeremy Jackson started at safety and made a big play about four minutes into the game. Jeremy Jackson's a guy that continues to play well. Uh, you know, you see him picking off a pass right here. I think he had uh, nine tackles. Just a guy from Walnut Hills who was a non-scholarship player just played himself into a starting position. Derek Ross, or Dominic Ross, rather, who had been playing at that position, also saw quite a bit of playing time in the game. And there's the interception by uh, Jeremy Jackson, the first of what turned out to be four turnovers. And the Bearcats were able to uh, turn it into points. Here's the first play of the drive, a 17-yard screen pass to Richard Hall. That's a nice call by our offensive coaching staff, Coach Treadwell, and uh, Richard gets the ball down the field there, and then you see Kevin LaBelle making, making the kick. The Cats weren't able to score a touchdown on that drive, but Kevin LaBelle's field goal made it. 3-0 Cincinnati. Now, you've kicked off to John Eubanks, the nation's number one kick returner going into the game. Greg Moore makes a huge play. Greg Moore, I think, makes one of the best plays of the game, obviously. Tremendous hit. Uh, we felt like we needed to have big plays in the special teams. We came up with two. Pump block and also this uh, this big hit here. And I think this was a um, pivotal, pivotal play in the game for us and uh, just sort of set the tone. You devoted extra attention during the week to kick and punt coverage, and it really paid off. You know, Tim Hinton is our special teams coach that's involved with uh, the kickoff and kickoff return team. And uh, Mike Tressel uh, heads that up, but uh, we worked extremely hard on that throughout the week. And it led to that touchdown on the eight-yard pass from Gino Gadouli to Doug Jones. 10-0 Cincinnati with four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. You know, Gino and Doug have, have uh, continuously been positive, uh, made positive plays for us. Another big play by Doug. I'm not sure how many touchdown catches he has, but uh, Gino again was flawless and uh, great decision making. I believe that was TD catch number three this year for Doug Jones. Brent Selleck has had six of them, so the big guys are doing a nice job in the passing game. You know, right here you see a guy uh, getting out on the flare pass here. This is, they came back, you know, Southern Miss has got great, uh, great effort in there. You know, they expect to win and they play hard, so uh, you see them getting in here to, to make the score close here. 10-7 ball game at that point, but uh, late in the half, Jamar Enzor blocked a punt, partially blocked one that gave you good field position, and Gino took advantage of it, hitting George Murray for the big game. And then Hannibal Thomas for a key touchdown with 38 seconds to go in the half. You know, we uh, we went back and forth there in a two-minute situation and actually uh, blocked the punt. Our defense wanted to go after it. Uh, coach Treadwell was actually on his way down from the box. It was still late in the half, and uh, Dan Enos, our quarterback coach, called these two plays and uh, did a great job. And, came up with seven points. I think this was a key in the game. We went from 10 to 7 to 17 to 7 at the, at the end of the half. Southern Miss tried to go long before the end of the half, and here's another turnover as Juwan Hall, basically playing center field, comes up with his third pick of the year. Juwan makes a nice play with a prevent there, and uh, you know, good things are happening. You got the ball to begin the third quarter, and boom, a huge play right off the bat. Huge play, another great call here by our offense. Good stutter by, by uh, Hannibal. Got the free safety looking. You know, put it right on the money. It's a big play for us. Southern Miss is always known for having good defensive backs. They played very aggressively, and you used that against them uh, yesterday. Well, you know, they came into the uh, into the game ranked in the top 20 as, as pass secondary. 
and uh, actually as a defensive unit. And you know, it just goes to, you know, it's a great effort by our offense, and uh, our receivers are playing very well. How about Geno yesterday? Virtually flawless. Flawless uh, execution. He's been that way the last four games. That touchdown catch, the 80-yarder by Hannibal Thomas, was the longest one Geno has ever thrown. It gave Cincinnati a, a seven more points onto a, what had been the 10-point lead. And then when Southern Miss got the ball back, Hagler recovers the fumble, forced by Trent Cole, and you're in great field position again. You know, we went from 10 to 7 at the end of the second quarter to all of a sudden it's 31 to 7 with uh, 10 minutes to go in the third. And uh, uh, turnovers are making the difference for us. Bradley Glothar scores on the one-yard run. Third week in a row, the freshman has scored. Bradley runs extremely hard and uh, another productive freshman for us. Southern Miss did keep coming at you. Dustin Allman, just as he was being hit, completing that pass to Duran Lawrence down to the three-yard line. But your defense stepped up here and held Southern Miss to a field goal. I thought we played very well down in the red zone and in particular on the goal line. And we actually, you know, living in for three points there. McCaleb kicks the field goal. It's the 14th straight one he's made dating back to last season. But your offense comes right back again. Gino Gadulli to George Murray for a key 17-yard pickup on third down and 12. That kept the drive alive. And then into the fourth quarter, Gino finds Brent Selleck for another score. You know, the, they had about everybody on their, on their team up at the line of scrimmage to stop the run. And we felt like we needed to pass it, not go into the bag, and continue to play. And uh, Brett, I think, is um, the sixth touchdown catch of the season. And I, I see where Hannibal has nine. And, Doug has three, and, you know, we just continue to roll, and that's credit to Gino and the entire offense. It was a 38-10 to 10 ball game after that touchdown catch by Selleck. Southern Miss did come back. The long pass from Allman leading to his one-yard touchdown sneak. That made it 38-17, but again, an immediate answer as Gino goes to Hannibal Thomas for his fifth touchdown pass of the game. That is a new Cincinnati record. Well, you know, I... There's really not, nothing I can say about it. Uh, you know, Gino executed tremendously. Um, you see Colin Carey getting in here on fourth and six to, to end the scoring for us. But uh, our offense, our offensive line has played tremendously. Um, to think about the stat, just giving up six sacks in nine games is a tremendous stat. Has not been sacked, I think, the last three games. Hasn't turned the ball over. Um, just is making great decisions. A uh, remarkable victory for the Bearcats. Again, Cincinnati moving over 500 for the first time this season by beating Southern Miss by 28 points on the Golden Eagles' home field. Let's take a look at the game summary. Cincinnati wins it by the 52-24 to 24 final score. The Bearcats uh, handing the Golden Eagles just their 12th home loss in the 14-year tenure of head coach Jeff Bauer. The turnover uh, takeaway ratio, 4-zip in favor of the Cats. Gino Gadulli passing for 308 yards and five touchdowns, and his favorite target was Hannibal Thomas, 168 receiving yards and three of the scores. The three touchdown catches tie Cincinnati's school record. Coming up next, we'll take you just outside the locker room to hear what the players had to say right after the game. The Coach D'Antonio Show will continue right after these messages. from Beachmont Ford, and with the hottest days of summer come the hottest deals at Beachmont Ford. Get a new Taurus just $11,995 or $209 a month, or a new Ranger just $99.95 or $169 a month. Hurry in for your hot deal today. At Watson's, this weekend, over 1,000 brand-name billiard tables, poker and game tables, bars, bar stools, and more will be offered to the public at factory special pricing. Over 1,000 slate pool tables are priced from just $6.88. Leather pocket antique style tables from $9.88. Buy seat poker and game tables from $8.88. A professional 300 poker chip set with case just $39.99. Texas Hold'em tables from $2.49. Plus, get no payments, no interest for 12 full months. Thursday through Monday, only at Watson's. I can do it. I can do it. I can't do it. I can't stop smoking. Oh, that's a big surprise. Maybe next Monday. Sure. Maybe next year. Why not? Yeah, you know, cold turkey. Cold turkey. Ah, it's no use. I'm scum. I hey, hey, hey. Scum. You want to know like something? Scum. What? It took you a long time to learn to smoke, right? That's true. Very true. Yeah, but I worked at it. What makes you think you can quit? I don't know. Just like that. Quitting takes practice. I like that. Well, call us. We'll show you how to quit for good. I can do that. I know you can. You got ID? Okay. Nothing 
goes better with leftovers than some ice cold Pepsi. It's the cola. Hi, I'm Lauren Williams from Beachmont Ford, and with the hottest days of summer come the hottest deals at Beachmont Ford. Your choice: a new Taurus or America's number one selling truck, the F-150. Only eleven nine ninety five or two oh nine a month. Hurry in for your hot deal today. Welcome back to the Mark Antonio Show, where it's time to hear what the players had to say following yesterday's win in Hattiesburg. We start with Andre Frazier, who helped put pressure on Southern Miss quarterback Dustin Allman all day. It led to a couple of interceptions as the Cats won the turnover battle for zip Coach D'Antonio always focuses on the turnover margin. And uh, he believes if, if you can just get turnovers, you can win. And if you don't turn the ball over, you can win. So uh, that's, that's what we've been focusing on, getting turnovers and keeping the ball. Coach, you said the goal going in was to win that battle by two. You wound up winning it by four. Well, we ended up winning by four and also blocked the punt. So that's actually five opportunities for us. So, uh, But it, uh, I think I've been keeping track of that stat since like 1986. And uh, very few times have, have we ever lost a football game when we've been plus two. So, uh, you know, when you look at our last three games, we're 6-0. Not giving the ball over and we've taken it away six times. You're going to win games when you do that. How have you uh, changed the emphasis, if you have, on offense so that no one has put the ball on the ground in three games? Well, I think, first of all, it, uh, it comes with being a competitive person. We've, we've seen that this had, that's created problems for us. And then also, you know, if you put it on the ground, you're probably going to get put on the bench because we've got some guys who can play in and out. And so that's peer pressure a little bit. And uh, our offense works extremely hard throughout the week to try and get those things done. And, and just, um, you know, we, we see him working on ball protection. You notice Richard Hall, every time he goes into the line, um, you know, put both hands over the ball. And, and uh, Gino's making great decisions. The receivers are holding the ball. And, and uh, good things are happening. Offensively, Gino Gadulli's 14th career 300-yard passing performance featured the longest connection of his Bearcat career, an 80-yard TD pass to Hannibal Thomas, who describes the play. Well, uh, I think they was concentrating on Brent Selleck when he came under, and they, I really, I think they just, like, they didn't even look at me, so I just ran down the middle. Gino saw me, and I caught it, so. You kind of feel like now that you wish you had six or seven games more to play, as, as well as this team is playing right now? Oh, definitely. I wish we could just keep playing all year round, actually, so. Well, your team's not going to keep playing year-round, but you have a chance to play three more games instead of two after uh, winning three in a row to climb to five and four. Talked about the play during the highlights, but a terrific job by Hannibal Thomas of taking a few steps, drawing the defense in, and then stepping on the gas and blowing by the secondary. It was a great con conceptual thing by our offensive uh, coaching staff as well as Hannibal and Gino. You know, they, they played a lot of robber coverage, and he sort of stuttered the guy and, and then burst and, um, you know, got out. So, um, great execution. You know, uh, Hannibal's one of six receivers that we play in and out. And, uh, you know, we keep our guys fresh. When they get the ball, they're able to get, they have that extra gear to go. Also good to see Bill Poland sprinting down the field with him in case yeah. there was somebody to block on that play. Yeah, Bill's done a great job as well as the other receivers. And, you know, so we're rotating them in, them in and uh, um, it's paying dividends. Southern Miss went into the game yesterday having scored 51 points in its most recent game. Less than half of that was scored yesterday. Cornerback Davin Holly describes the game plan in shutting down the Golden Eagles. Well, we came out with a, a, a game plan to make them one-dimensional, you know, to stop the run. And we did a pretty good job of that. You know, we had some turnovers on special teams early that helped us. You know, the defense came out and played hard today. They've lost 12 mm -hmm. home games in the last 14 years, uh, none by this kind of margin. Are, are you a little surprised by what, what you did today? No, not at all. I mean, we did this three weeks in a row now going on. And uh, we can continue to do this. We got a great coaching staff. We got a great bunch of players that's ready and eager to play. And we're just going to keep on putting it together and doing stuff like this. Can you describe the feeling in the locker room right now? And uh, not only after this game, but how it's been in recent weeks. Well, these last three weeks, man, everybody's confidence is just rising. You know, the seniors are starting to play at a, another level. Uh, the sophomores are playing at another level. And the juniors are playing at senior level. So we real confident. You know, our guys are ready to come out and play each and every week. And it's, it's amazing how... You know, the locker room is just elevating. Everybody's just getting ready and prepared to play each and every week. Coach Tavin started with the strategy of stopping the run, which is always the number one key defensively. Southern Miss wound up with 137 rushing yards, but that included a big play when the second string was in late in the game, a 79-yard run. Aside from that, you completely stopped the running game. I think we played very well. We tackled very effectively. Uh, very few missed tackles. Uh, the third straight game that we've been, been able to do that, and uh, that's a credit to 
everybody, really, the coaching staff, players, how hard we're working, um, how important that is. Uh, we're ripping at the football, getting it out, and, um, you know, we've been able to stop the run and make them one-dimensional, like, like Gavin said. Cincinnati's leading tackler yesterday was defensive end Trent Cole, who had nine stops, including two in the backfield. He is among the national leaders in tackles for losses. Trent says he wasn't surprised the Cats were able to go into Hattiesburg and knock off the 21st-ranked Golden Eagles. I think we found out how to win. I think I, you can see it. I mean, if you're on a team, part of the team, I mean, you just, you could, I bet you even the, the fans even, I mean, we feel it. I mean, that's what I feel. I feel that we know how to win. I mean, people with this emotion, who have emotion, I mean, came to play ball. I mean, we want to win out here. I mean, we want to take it on to South Florida at home, you know what I'm saying, get a win there and go Louisville and win. I mean, it'll be big for us to win against Louisville since they're top dogs in the conference. Coach, I found it very interesting in talking to the guys after the game that while people around the country are going to see that score and be surprised, the players didn't seem to be, even though it was a lopsided win against a team that doesn't lose at home very often. Well, we expected to win when we went down there. We, we watched the game films, we prepare, our players did a great job. I thought we had a tremendous Thursday practice, and we're expecting to win. I mean, when you look at our last three games, those are three good football teams we've beaten. And if people have watched Memphis this past past week to think that uh, the quarterback threw for 50 yards against us and the tailback ran for 50 and then TCU is a good football team and now this football team is also a good football team so our confidence is definitely um, on the rise uh, we need to continue to be mature about where we're at understand that we're five and four but uh, you know good things are happening stay tuned because when we return we'll profile three of the cats true freshmen already playing a significant role the Mark D'Antonio show continues after this timeout solution was to do a forced air system. To me, just the ability to go from bedroom to the kitchen, uh, the temperature be consistent. I would recommend Apollo because it's a good company with people who pay attention to their customers. I can do it. I can do it. I can't do it. I can't stop smoking. Oh, that's a big surprise. Maybe next Monday. Sure. Maybe next year. Why not? Yeah, you know, cold turkey. Cold turkey. Ah, it's no use. I'm scum. I've hey, hey, been hey. Scum. You want to know I'm something? Like, what? It took you a long time to learn to smoke, right? That's true. Very true. Yeah, but I worked at it. What makes you think you can quit? I don't know. Just like that. Quitting takes practice. I like that. Well, call us. We'll show you how to quit for good. I can do that. I know you can. Welcome back. This is clearly a senior-dominated team. Just looking at the offense, the line is made up of seniors. You have Gino Gadulli at quarterback, Hannibal Thomas leading the way at receiver, and Richard Hall approaching 1,000 yards this year at running back. But the cupboard isn't bare. Today in our player profile, we look at three youngsters who are already contributing. Freshman Ernest Jackson is one of UC's leading receivers, but that was not his position in high school. For the past three years, Ernest was one of the top quarterbacks in the state of Michigan, passing for nearly 5,000 yards and 54 touchdowns. They said they would give me a chance to quarterback, which they did. And then uh, I was just really, they felt that I'd, I'd help the team more at receiver, so they moved me to receiver. Um, I really hadn't had that much experience at receiver in high school. I played a little running back, little receiver, little DB, you know, but it wasn't really that much. I just basically got there, ran routes, caught the ball, you know, it wasn't too much. 
But uh, when I came here, they, they definitely taught me how to run crisp routes and everything. Ernest did not catch a pass in UC's first three games, but only senior Hannibal Thomas has more receptions since. I mean, I'm confident in myself, you know. I, I mean, I, I never come in planning on just coming in the program just sitting, you know. So, I mean, I worked as hard as I could to try to get on the field, you know. And, uh, I mean, coaches thought that it was time to put me in when they did, you know. And, the rest is history, really. Fellow Detroit resident Butler Benton also burst on the scene quickly, running for 127 yards against East Carolina in his fourth college game. For the season, he's the Cats' second leading rusher behind senior Richard Hall. Coming into camp, I just worked hard and tried my best to keep moving up on the depth chart. And I figured if I just played to the best of my potential, hopefully something good happened. I ended up in the rotation. I've learned a lot from Richard Hall. He kind of gives me pointers and just teaches me different things about the whole everything in college football. Because I really, coming in, I'm new. I really don't know that much. But he's been around for a while. So he's been able to teach me a lot of things. Basically, just, just learning something every day. Cincinnati's third leading rusher is another true freshman. Former elder standout Bradley Glodhar, the Panthers' all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. Staying close to home is paying off. Yeah, it's nice to know some other people. They have problems getting people in, in town at the games, and I know all my family goes to all the games. I mean, I look up in the crowd and see people I know, so it's nice. What's been the highlight so far? Probably when we ran across the field out here in Nippert and took the bell from Miami. And that was just my, my first game, I guess, in the rivalry, but knowing all the seniors, knowing how much it meant to them, I was special. There will be many more special moments to come a trio of talented freshmen who came to UC. Coach Antonio, he's really just a straightforward, honest kind of coach. This is the kind of coach you'll want to play for. So that's one of the main reasons why I came here. I decided to come to UC because of, after talking to uh, Coach Antonio and all the other coaches, it, it felt like, like a nice family fit for me, you know? Just, you know, people that would look out for me, you know? And uh, just a good atmosphere. I was looking at a couple of places, but I really like Coach Antonio. In the situation, moving in the Big East seemed like the best fit for me. Coach, we've talked about it many times. This is obviously a senior-laden team. You've got some great players in that senior class, but you needed to work young guys in this year, and those are three true freshmen doing a great job. Yeah, you know, I really felt like we'd be successful if we were able to take our seniors this year and combine them with our young players coming in. And uh, what's, what's happened is our seniors have brought our freshmen into the fold, all of them, whether they've played or not, and made it a family-type atmosphere. Uh, those three freshmen that you saw, they're very mature young men. Uh, they have uh, goals. Um, you know, they're doing very well in school. But more importantly, I think, is their mindset is, is one of, a, of an older player, and that's why they're playing. And, uh, you know, they're playing very well. And they're not the only freshmen that are playing. Uh, Antoine Giddens is seeing significant playing time. We saw Doug Jones as a redshirt freshman had the touchdown catch yesterday. Quite a few members of that freshman class are contributing. We saw Greg Moore, he's a sophomore, make the big hit. He played a little bit at tailback. <clears throat> Jonathan Carpenter is playing in and out throughout the game. So we've got some young players playing, and, and that's good for the program. Stay tuned. The Mark D'Antonio Show will return in just a moment. from Beachmont Ford. With the hottest days of summer come the hottest deals at Beachmont Ford. Get a new Taurus just $11,995 or $209 a month. Or a new Ranger just $99.95 or $169 a month. Hurry in for your hot deal today. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. What a marvelous night for the action. Let's go to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching Miss Hottie. Oh, oh no. no. Rejected. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah, no play for Mr. Gray. Get that man our just a man fresh in color gel. It's specially formulated to penetrate coarse facial hair and gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. Gets rid of strikeouts, too. <laughs> just for men gel. The Rejuvenator. At Watson's this weekend, over 1,000 brand-name billiard tables, bars, bar stools, and more will be offered to the public at factory special pricing. Slate pool tables are priced from just $6.88. For the ultimate game room, add an authentic slot machine, a foosball, or air hockey table, or our hottest new arcade game. And that's not all. Home theater seating groups start at just $9.99. Plus, get no payments, no interest for 12 full months. Thursday through Monday, only at Watson's. Sounds better.
better than pizza and Pepsi. It's the cold one. Hi, I'm Lauren Williams from Beachmont Ford. And with the hottest days of summer come the hottest deals at Beachmont Ford. Your choice, a new Taurus or America's number one selling truck, the F-150. Only $11,995 or $209 a month. Hurry in for your hot deal today. Welcome back to the Mark D'Antonio Show. Let's take a look at the standings in Conference USA. Louisville, the only unbeaten team left in conference play after you spoiled Southern Miss's perfect record yesterday. And the Cats have climbed into third place now with a 4-2 record in the league. You know, we're third. I think they picked us ninth coming into the season. So uh, to our seniors, a lot of credit for keeping the leadership. Uh, we're playing very well. And, you know, we've got a little bit of our own destiny on our own hands. Here. And the teams you've beaten in the last three weeks were picked second, third, and fourth in the league going into the season, Memphis, TCU, and Southern Miss. So not only have you climbed into third place, but you've done it by beating three of the premier teams in the league. Well, that, I thought that was a positive thing when we looked at after our Army game and that, uh, you know, we could get back in the thick of things by controlling our own destiny. And we had the toughest part of the schedule to play. Uh, South Florida comes up in a week and a half, I guess, or two weeks. And uh, they'll be extremely difficult as well. But uh, we'll take it one game at a time. On one hand, when you have a bye at this point, when you're playing so well, maybe you'd, you'd like to keep rolling. But on the other hand, you've got some players nicked up. Uh, Taiwan Hagler in particular has a bit of a hip problem. He should be fine in a couple of weeks. We've got some players nicked up. Uh, you know, we lost a couple of players the week before, so it gives them a chance to heal a little bit more. And uh, it would give us an opportunity to go out and recruit here on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week and, uh, and look at uh, players outside of the state. We've done a pretty good job, I think, of looking at the players in state. We can only go once right now. but. Uh, also, just to help us prepare our young players a little bit more this week, sort of take it as a spring practice a little bit. The South Florida game is the home finale. Come out and support the Cats. Give them some credit for the great play they've displayed in the last three weeks. It's against South Florida. Great tickets remain. That's a 3.30 start at Nippert Stadium in two weeks. That's going to do it for this week's show. For Coach D'Antonio and Executive Producer Dave Ashbrock, I'm Dan Horde. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week on the Mark D'Antonio Show. D'Antonio Show, your in-depth look at Bearcat football, is brought to you by Beachmont Ford, Pepsi, and ISB Sports.